Hi, Peter Ash here. We're at Amrita Puri in Kerala, India. And I want to show you our vermicomposting unit. We started thermophilically composting the ashram's food waste several years ago, and then we began vermicomposting. And we started out very small, which is the way I always suggest, start small and build up from there. So now we've reached the point that we have this new facility that we built and designed just for vermicomposting. So what we've been doing is we pre-compost the food waste with yard waste and a lot of other things. And then we bring it down here and we start to feed it to the worms. Right now at this point, as you can see here, we just have basically nursery beds where we're kind of building up our, our worm population to go into large-scale vermicomposting. So um, let's take a look here. And what we've done here is we've taken the pre-composted food waste and we've we filtered it and then we're feeding it to the worms. And now this right here that I'm digging into is finished vermicompost and it just needs to be filtered a little bit. There's just a few worms left in this because we've been allowing this to dry out and the worms are working their way down the row. And that's the intention of this, is the windrow system where we start with some food, add the worms, get it nice and wet so the worms are comfortable and happy. And then as we see them working over the material, then we add some more food. And so we work them down the line and then we come back to where we started a couple months later, three or four months later, and we, after we've allowed it to dry out a little bit, then we can harvest from that. So what we're doing here basically are nursery beds. So here we're looking at the feedstock for the worms. And this is that pre-composted food waste that's been filtered, and so it's pretty fine in size. But even here, I can feel it's hot inside. It's not finished compost yet. But it's, this is what we're taking to feed the worms. And so with this, we lay down some material and we get it really wet. We have cows, and so we're using cow dung. And we're mixing that up with water and we're putting that cow dung slurry over the top of this and just really saturating this. Getting it up to about 95% moisture, up to 95%. At that, then we'll see some of that leaking out the sides, and that's about what we want. We want to see that to where we got the pile so wet that it's leaking out the side. Then we can take some of this and just sprinkle it out on the floor in the aisle next to the bed to soak up any extra liquid that comes out. And then after it's done that for a day or so, we can shovel that up and put it back up on top of the bed. Okay, so. Here we have our cow dung slurry. We've taken fresh cow dung and added water and then we just stir it up until we get this. It's, we want it nice and wet, but the cow dung itself, the fresh cow dung, the worms love it. And so it's important too because the cow dung has a lot of microbiology in it. And when we add that to this dry pre-composted food waste with a lot of wood chips and, and yard waste and stuff in it, this will help to soften those larger particles and get it decomposing so the worms can eat that. So we, we keep this um, ready and available to so keep the, the piles wet. So as we look over here, um, we've, we've, we looked at our little nursery beds and now we're building some larger beds. And this is unfiltered pre-composted food waste. So now we've got larger chunks in it, not the, like the little nursery beds where we used filtered material to feed the worms. So as we wet this and the water leaks out, then we sprinkle on the floor some of that filtered compost, and that's what you see here. And so after this is sat for a day or so, then we'll just take the shovel and we'll shovel it and put it back up on top. We just want to keep this bed wet. And then as we go along, as the worms start working through this, then, then after we see it really kind of settle and the particle size is smaller, we see the surface change like that first material that I showed you, where we can see it get, has gotten darker, the worms have eaten through it really well, then we start to, to let it dry out. So if we begin the road down here, let's walk down here. So we start here, 
and we get the worm started and then after some time goes by, a month or two, depending on how many worms we put in the beginning, then we can add um, more food and we let the worms work their way and as they finish eating, they, they're going to work their way into the fresh food. As long as we keep things moist, the worms will stay in there and in two months time, the population doubles. So we have twice as many worms, so they're eating more food at a faster pace. So as we watch this work, eventually we get to about three, four months after that initial pile, that the initial part has been pretty well digested. Worms have hatched in there, the new babies, and they're starting to work towards, towards the new food. So what we're doing here to ramp up the, the, the scale of our operation is we lay down some, some of this pre-digested, pre-composted food waste, unfiltered, and we bank it against the wall here. And when we get it wet, and this, at this amount, it's still going to be hot down in the middle, too hot for the worms. But as long as we keep it really saturated with the cow dung slurry, the worms will be able to work the edges and the surface. The, because this is a cement wall and a cement floor, that's going to draw some of the heat out of that center portion of the pile where it's still the thermophilic composting is taking place. As it cools down, the worms will work their way in. So after a while, we'll see this pile where we started begin to shrink down and we'll see the worms have worked it over really well. So we add more food in front and we keep it wet. And so as time goes by, when we get three or four months into it, we'll see that the beginning portion is pretty well finished. And at that point, we'll start to dry it out. So the worms will move to the wetter portions of the pile. They will finish the food. Even the worms that have hatched after two months, the new worms, they will start running out of food. But when they run out of moisture, they will have to move down the row. So as we, move, as we work our way down the row, we keep keeping, we keep everything wet with the cow dung slurry, keep the worms very happy, and then we start drying it out after about four months at the end where we started. And then, before we reach the end of the wall, we will be harvesting from this end. So as we dry it out to the point where it's too dry for the worms to be there, we can just start raking the material off, and then we can take it to filter it. So here's our filtering machine. We, we designed and built this machine ourselves just for this operation. So um, this is run by a small electric motor. You can see it's on an angle. This is the end where we'll feed the, the finished compost in. And this machine will slowly turn. And because of the angle, the material will work its way down the machine. So this first section is, is fine mesh. This is like 1 8 inch mesh. And then this next section here is quarter inch mesh. And then the final section is like half inch mesh. It's actually in millimeters, it's a little smaller than that. But the idea is each section has a baffle, so any chunks or large material will break up as it's turning through, and it falls through the holes in the, in the bottom of the baffle. So what will happen is the very fine material will drop out here, we'll have a waiting bin for it. The second size will fall out here, we'll have a bin for that. The third size, and then because what we're, what we're feeding the worms is unfiltered, pre-composted food waste. A lot of the food waste um, is, is fibrous. Um, the banana stems, coconuts, tender coconuts are all shredded. And there's big pieces of fiber. So anything that the worms have not digested will fall out the end here. And so even that material will make great mulch. It will have all the excellent biology that the worms uh, provide and will have a really fine uh, finished compost. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next video. You know, we're at the kind of the experimental state right now where we're making that transition from a smaller, much smaller system to this larger scale system where we're, we're starting with these nursery beds just to build our worm population up so we can work to these larger beds um, with a lot more worms in action 
and we'll have these long windrows going where we're harvesting at one end while we're adding at the other end. So stay tuned and come back and see us again.